Muscle loss, also known as sarcopenia, is a natural part of aging that occurs due to various factors such as reduced physical activity, hormonal changes and protein deficiency. Muscle loss can lead to weakness, mobility problems, falls and increased risk of chronic disease. There are also various genetic diseases that result in muscle loss and reduced function and hence much research has been conducted to find therapeutic solutions. In this video we'll take a look. So the story begins 27 years ago when scientists characterised the gene called GDF8. When mice were created that lacked this gene, the mice displayed increased skeletal muscle mass in various places, such as their face and upper limbs. As you can see, it's quite striking. But why did the lack of this gene cause this dramatic change? Well, GDF8 encodes the protein myostatin. The protein you may have heard of before as similar knockouts in cattle give us beasts like this double-muscled Belgian blue. It's also been documented in humans. This article documents a case where a female who was a former professional athlete gave birth to a son after a normal pregnancy and the newborn appeared extraordinarily muscular with protruding muscles in his thighs and upper arms. On further analysis, it was seen that there was a mutation in the myostatin gene. The mutation led to a novel splice site and ultimately a truncated myostatin protein. But researchers could also do the opposite. By overexpressing myostatin in mice, they induced muscle and fat loss analogous to that seen in human cachexia syndromes. But what exactly is myostatin? Myostatin is a member of the protein family TGF-beta, and is expressed in developing an adult skeletal muscle. The protein is secreted from myocytes, and the current understanding is that it binds to receptors on the cell membrane of muscle cells and triggers a downstream response to change gene expression and inhibits muscle growth. Folistatin is a protein that inhibits myostatin. By blocking myostatin, folistatin can increase muscle mass and strength, as well as reduce fat and inflammation. This has been shown in mice and in non-human primates. In this study, researchers added folistatin in aged mice and found that it not only increased muscle mass, but also improved the neuromuscular function. These findings strongly implicated the therapeutic potential of folistatin in the treatment of muscular dystrophy, muscle loss and impaired neuromuscular function caused by aging or microgravity. A more recent study showed that intranasal delivery of folistatin increased healthy lifespan in female mice. Here you can see that the median age of death was increased by 32.5% in the folistatin treated group. The treated animals also had a shinier coat and smooth texture, as well as experiencing less hair loss when compared to the wild type mice. This suggested that folistatin has an important function in maintaining healthy skin and hair in old mice. It also improved elements of the mitochondria, where you can see an improvement in the mitochondrial structure in the treated mice with folistatin. However, this longevity benefit was surprising. As the article states, it was unexpected that the folistatin gene therapy alone would increase longevity to the extent observed. Although it is known that folistatin has a concentration-dependent inhibiting effect on the myostatin-driven rate of muscle breakdown, which contributes increasing frailty in ageing individuals, the overall effect of increasing longevity warrants further inquiry. So is there any human evidence that folistatin gene therapy could work? Well, human clinical trials have already been conducted. A phase 1 to a for Becker muscular dystrophy was successful, and a phase 1 trial has been conducted for Dutch N muscular dystrophy. Both these trials delivered the gene via adeno-associated viruses. There is also a company, MiniCycle, that is using an alternative approach with gene delivery, also to give patients folistatin. Ultimately, it will be important to find an optimal mode of delivery. So while there isn't much data yet to go by, it seems like this could be a promising approach. But the other factor that's worth considering is that there are three known isoforms of folistatin, which likely have differing effects within the body. Most notably is the fact that folistatin is highly expressed in the ovaries, where it plays a role in follicular genesis. Interestingly, in that mouse study I showed you where folistatin increased healthy lifespan, it was only done in female mice. But in the study, I couldn't see any analysis of the impact on the ovaries. So I hope someone investigates this more thoroughly. 
And so given that besides patients with rare muscular diseases, cancer treatment for those with cachexia, sarcopenia is age-associated and leads to frailty and falls. It will therefore be really interesting to see how folistatin gene therapy progresses and whether this could be an effective intervention to prevent this.